When Labour was led by Jeremy Corbyn, senior staff members sought to undermine the party during a general election. How did the BBC react to this news? Silence. However, this Thursday, Newsnight set aside a whole 20 minutes to expose the scandal of Unite the Union organising to deselect a few right-wing MPs. A movement founded with the highest of ideals. A movement always bedeviled by profound differences. And in recent years, a movement laid low by bitter divisions. It's the honour of my lifetime to lead this great movement. A new era now with a leader pledged to restore unity. But as Keir Starmer experiences a tough period, divisions are bursting into the open. Foul play comes the cry from adversaries of the left as Newsnight sees evidence of the depth of planning on the left to challenge established Labour figures. I think up and down the country, there were attempts to destabilise Labour MPs to get rid of them. I think if people had known that these conversations were taking place when they were taking place, there would have been real shock. I think even Jeremy Corbyn would have uh, condemned that kind of behaviour. So you've got the gloomy music. Uh, Nick Watt, the, the host, is talking about the depth of planning on the left. Tom Watson is saying the plans were so scandalous that Jeremy Corbyn would have opposed them. This was all people trying to destabilise Labour MPs. Let's take a look at what this sinister plot amounted to. It's explained by Nick Watt via some leaked emails. A new flare-up of old embers after Newsnight saw emails by a West Midland Unite activist outlining plans to try and unseat leading Labour figures. In an email dated the 12th of February 2018, addressed to a senior Unite official, Howard Beckett, the activist Steve Price outlined plans to influence the selection of councillors and to put the skids under the former minister John Speller and Tom Watson, who was then Labour's deputy leader. Newsnight has also seen internal Unite emails in which officials discuss Mr Price's first email. One said that one hour may not be enough time to deal with all the issues he had raised. In a second email on the 15th of March 2018, addressed to Howard Beckett, Steve Price wrote of how his networking was vital in building up trusted left routes in 59 constituencies. Finally, Steve Price wrote that it had been agreed that he would be paid, but he needed a form of words to describe what he was, wait for it, not doing. All of that sinister music. You know, all of those tones of voice of what were the left organising to do? It all amounts to, in 2018, a trade union, Unite, organising with an activist who wanted to deselect some MPs who the trade union weren't politically aligned with. That include people included people like Tom Watson and John Speller. This is not a big deal, right? Trade unions are supposed to have an influence in political parties. Trade unions have always tried to influence selections. If you want to influence who is an MP in a Labour seat, what you're first going to have to do is deselect a Labour MP. This is all completely normal. And it's especially normal considering that in 2018, you had Tom Watson actively working to undermine the electoral chances of the Labour Party. I don't understand how they've managed to get a story out of this, but they have. Um, And they've employed all the old usual suspects to essentially pretend to be outraged that anyone could possibly fight battles within the Labour Party instead of battling the Tories. It's outrageous that at a time when all our focus should have been on uh, defeating the Conservative government in the interests of the people whom we're elected to represent, that the Unite, our biggest union, that there was a discussion going on about how to undermine sitting MPs and get rid of them in something like 59 constituencies, that there was a discussion about getting rid of councillors who didn't meet the political agenda of the few people at the top of Unite. There was a discussion about sacking key officials at the Labour Party, the General Secretary, and uh, the official in charge of looking at anti-Semitic complaints. And there was a discussion about placing people in seats when uh, MPs were retiring, or those seats were seen as marginal. It is appalling to envisage that all that was going on when we were all trying 
to defeat the Conservative government and as a trade union, never has it been more important for them to do their day job, which is to defend their members' interests against all the changes that come from the gig economy, from insecure labour and from the challenge to employment rights. No, if I had any more hair, when watching this, I would have teared most of mine out because watching Margaret Hodge complain about people who dared to organise inside the party instead of battle the, battling the Tories, because the only priority should be battling the Tories, it's bananas, quite frankly. Margaret Hodge has spent the past five years at every opportunity undermining the electoral chances of the Labour Party by going on the radio and calling the leader a racist, right? She had a vote of no confidence in the democratically elected leader. She had no interest in Labour winning any elections during those whole five years, yet she's allowed to go on Newsnight and claim to be outraged that anyone did any completely legitimate organising within the Labour Party. She even made it sound sinister that Unite wanted to help select MPs, even in seats where the sitting MP was, was resigning. You know, no one in their right mind thinks that's remotely sinister. I'm obviously in favour of mandatory deselection. I think it's perfectly within any activist's right to try and deselect a sitting MP who they don't feel is properly representing them. But she made it seem like even placing an MP where someone is resigning is a problem. I mean, you've also got to take some of those examples. You get that they were trying to get rid of the person who was in charge of anti-Semitism complaints. Now, you've got to remember, Margaret Hodge, the rest of the time, is saying the anti-Semitism complaints were dealt with so poorly. Why do you think they were maybe trying to get rid of that guy, Right. She also says they were trying to get rid of the general secretary. We know from the Labour leaks that the general secretary partook in conversations where people were incredibly disappointed that Labour had taken Theresa May's majority off her. So for Newsnight to allow this to be pitched as there were some left wingers who were too distracted to win elections when literally talking to some of the people who were most obsessed with undermining Labour's chances is very, very bad journalism. The story doesn't end there because Hodge didn't just sort of take pride of place in this Newsnight segment. She has also um, used this story of these leaked emails, which I find very inoffensive, um, to notify the police. She's told the police on Unite the Union, in particular Howard Beckett. Let's go to a tweet. This is what she sent during the show as it was airing. Yesterday, I wrote to the Met Police concerning an alleged criminal offence by the trade union Unite that I have been made aware of. I have now called for an immediate police investigation. Why is this a police investigation? Obviously, they might complain about MPs getting deselected from their jobs for life. That's not a police issue. Her claim is what's dodgy. Um, is the funding of this or the potential funding of this. So let's look at her explanation of what she thinks was unlawful. I have recently seen emails suggesting that Unite top officials have been covertly funding political activities, keeping this secret from its hardworking members. If true, this is unlawful. Now, the emails in question were shown in the Newsnight report there from an activist, Steve Price, um, who suggested that Howard Beckett, who's the Assistant General Secretary of Unite had agreed he would be paid for the organising he did. Now, this would be problematic if it happened and was not declared. When trade unions do political campaigning with their money, which is perfectly legitimate, they're supposed to say they've done it and say how they spent it. So if this happened without being declared, it would be problematic. But there is no evidence that happened. All there is evidence of is one activist saying, oh, someone told me I could get paid and no one replying. On Newsnight, Howard Beckett, who is the person um, who these allegations are essentially being targeted towards, he responded to the allegations. Yes, uh, Steve made a proposal to me and I decided to go in a different direction. There was nothing wrong with the proposal that Steve made. The idea that T Tom Watson is shocked by this uh, is quite extraordinary. But uh, I decided to go in a different direction, including our political officers. So, no, the arrangement never was for formalised with Steve. Uh, but as I say, there's certainly nothing wrong with the suggestions that was made in his email. Uh, you say n never formalised, you went in a different direction. But it is very odd language. For instance... Can you explain what's going on here? I need a form of words to describe what I am not doing. If there's nothing wrong with that, why does he need a form of words to describe what he isn't doing? No idea. Um, I have no idea why Steve chose that language is over three years ago. But obviously, Steve was is an activist in the West Midlands, a good activist. He obviously had ideas in his own mind as to how he could generate activism around the West Midlands, and he wanted some financial remuneration with it. I decided in the end that I would go with our political officers and I wanted to see that activism that Steve talked about 
organically grew rather than have a fiduciary relationship. But there was nothing wrong with Steve's suggestions at all. And there was nothing shocking. But first of all, he's saying, you know, quite rightly, well, he said he thought he was going to get paid, but we never paid him. Maybe a misunderstanding happened. These things happen all the time. By the way, I have no idea if they did. I just think it's ridiculous that this story from 2018, which at most, I mean, how much money could this have involved if it actually happened? How is this worth a big deal news night? story also it's worth saying she's saying unless this was deeply sinister why would he have said i need a turn of phrase to explain what i'm not doing right and i mean for me it's obvious what that would mean which is that unfortunately despite lots of campaigning that we did on the left to campaign to replace your sitting mp you have to do lots of negative campaigning because we don't have open primaries you have to deselect them first before you get to select someone better. Now, obviously, trying to deselect a sitting MP, at the very least, it's a little bit awkward. You don't normally say, oh, I'm organizing in this CLP to deselect the sitting MP because people will look at you a bit funny, right? So it's quite natural that you're not going to necessarily say that that's your explicit plan. But the reason that's necessary is because the structures of the Labour Party are so awful. The big picture here is this is all from 2018. The amount of money, I assume, is involved, if there is any money involved, as I say, there's no proof that all of these denials from Unite would be tiny. This is being dug up now because there are elections for the general secretary of Unite going on now. Howard Beckett is one of the candidates and members of the PLP don't want him to win. So they've leaked these pretty innocuous emails to Newsnight and Newsnight have decided to do a whole 20 minute piece on it, interviewing all of these people who spent five years wrecking the Labour Party as if they're serious authorities on questions such as this. Why I find it so shocking is because we had another report that was full of leaked emails of people who were actually very willing to undermine Labour's electoral chances. We know that when Labour actually performed surprisingly well, there was a conversation, including the General Secretary, including Head of Elections, where they were all incredibly disappointed that Labour had done well. That was a scandal, right? There is no evidence that Unite didn't want Labour to win the general election. There is tons of evidence that many top staffers had no interest whatsoever in Labour winning a general election. As far as I know, Newsnight never covered that. Newsnight never covered that. That was actually scandalous. There was actually evidence of wrongdoing. Here, you've got, in 2018, a trade union organised to deselect some MPs. Like, give me a break. What's most infuriating here is listening to Margaret Hodge sort of talk about how dare people um, not be 100% focused on Labour winning a general election. What I find most embarrassing here is Newsnight thinking this was worthy of a 20-minute segment. 20 minutes for a really flimsy piece of journalism where there isn't a smoking gun where you can point to it and go, okay, money did leave, um, you know, Howard Beckett or Unite and did pay this activist. And here we've got the proof it wasn't declared. Then you've got 20 minutes essentially of speculation based on an exceptionally boring email thread in which there is no clear evidence of wrongdoing. And so the idea that that amount of journalistic time, and I use the word journalistic here quite loosely, um, has gone into something which doesn't even deliver the coup de grace. I just think, aren't there better stories to cover? Was this a slow news day? Could you really not think of anything else? Um, If I was an editor at Newsnight, I'd be saying, well, go back and get me that missing piece of evidence, which proves beyond a shadow of the doubt that there was wrongdoing and not declaring payments, right? It's a really bad, flimsy, um, insubstantial piece of journalism without that. It's also incredibly boring. But let's also talk about how um, it's put together, all right? The BBC is supposed to be balanced. And what that balance is, we all know is fiercely contested is, you know, there are guidelines, but there's also something in the eye of the beholder. One of the things that I thought would involve being balanced would be putting, I think, tougher questions to Tom Watson and to Margaret Hodge. So when she's coming out and she's saying, this is when all of us should have been focused on defeating the Tories, then you, I think quite fairly go, but didn't you put a motion of no confidence in Jeremy Corbyn? the year before. Um, If you've got uh, Tom Watson saying, you know, I don't even think Jeremy Corbyn would uh, approve of such behaviours. You know, wouldn't there have been a conversation about, well, hang on, um, Momentum, the campaigning organisation close to Corbyn was trying to make open selections a reality. You know, it was yourself and many others who put the kibosh on that. So the very basic forms of stress testing 
that you would expect uh, from journalists to be put to these figures didn't happen. So for the BBC, I think it is it, worse than embarrassing. It's actually, you know, undignified and I think raises serious questions for the credibility of all those involved. But let's get back to, you know, the kind of, you know, when you've got a story like this, which is essentially so bureaucratic, tedious, um, and, you know, flimsy that it doesn't have a killer blow, you kind of have to squint at it to see what the picture is, right? It's kind of impressionistic. Essentially, what this is trying to achieve is an overall, I think, smear of Howard Beckett, who is one of the left candidates in the uh, race to replace uh, Len McCluskey uh, as General Secretary of Unite. But it's also, I think, serving this purpose of trying to delegitimize the role of unions in the Labour Party. Now, the Labour Party came out of the trade unions. It came out of the Labour movement. And obviously, as a lot's changed in terms of, you know, trade union membership, trade union militancy, and also the decline of industrial labour, of course, there have been huge changes um, in, in terms of that historic role of the trade unions within the Labour Party. But essentially, the principle is that the party is itself the political expression of organised labour. All right, that's still supposed to be the point. Now, you do have a tendency, a wing within the Labour Party, you know, kind of most perfectly encapsulated by Peter Mandelson, who thinks that that shouldn't be what the Labour Party is about, that they should essentially be um, a kind of technocratic, managerial and sort of bit more redistributive party, which from a lofty distance operates in the interests of those who it deems to be uh, the less well off, but, you know, fundamentally isn't about empowering them. And the Peter Mandelson theory is that if you do break the reliance of the Labour Party on its trade union funding, then, well, you just rely on big money donors. The problem is, is that under the leadership of Keir Starmer, there has been a decline in trade union funding. And there hasn't been a huge return of the big money donors that the likes of Peter Mandelson would like to see come back to the party. So in terms of political strategy, this is, I think, entirely uh, counterproductive because one, one of the broad brushes that the public emerges with is like, oh, this is another labor infighting story. All right. No one gives a shit about 2018. You know, few people could tell you the real difference between Tom Watson and Jeremy Corbyn. All right. It's, these aren't things which anyone other than, you know, really like clued in politicos will care that much about, right? The bigger picture is one of our oh, Labour's a bit of a mess again. Two, you're alienating uh, one of the party's biggest funders without an alternative stream of funding in place, right? These big money donors are not coming back. And three, what you end up with, I think, is, is, is a strange thing to do, which is if you're the Labour right and what you want is for Howard Beckett to be drummed out of the Unite le leadership race, well, at the moment, there are multiple left wing candidates, right? And it's if you keep all of them in the race, you have an increased likelihood of someone who is, you know, kind of more affiliated with the right of Unite, you know, coming through as the left wing vote gets split. So I think doing a big hit job on Howard Beck is, you know, what if he did, you know, leave the race? Well, that's actually a bit worse for your guy um, because you still get another lefty coming through and perhaps uh, winning the general secretary position. So, yeah, just embarrassing, poorly thought out, unstrategic. And I just, I, I was watching that segment mostly because you told me to, Michael. And I was like, how is this going on for so long? <laughs> you can go and watch that on iPlayer if you want. Thursday night on Newsnight. I laughed out loud a few times just because of how ridiculous it was. One thing I do want to mention, right? So there are two, there are two ways that story could have been relevant. So one, it's the whole sort of like deselection is an illegitimate thing to do, right? Which... I've explained enough times why I think it's ridiculous. The other is, this is a bad story of money being used illegitimately in politics. Now, you've got to think here. I've got no idea if this money changed hand. Obviously, Howard Beckett's denying it. It seems like their evidence is very, very weak. But the amount of money you'd pay an organiser to help deselect some people is, is not much money. You know, you're talking a couple of grand or something. Again, this is completely hypothetical. Now, yesterday, another story about money in politics broke which was that a lord who Boris Johnson gave a peerage, despite objections from the House of Lords Ethics Committee, gave the Conservative Party half a million pounds three days after being sworn in to the House of Lords. 
Now, that's a genuine story about money and politics. That's a lot of money changing hands. And it's a lot of money changing hands between an elite with vested interests and a party in power. This was a trade union whose job it is, or one of their key jobs is to organize to make political change and who have every right to organize in selection campaigns. Potentially, they've denied it. But the allegation is paying one activist a bit of money to tide him over while he's organizing. It's it's completely ridiculous. We've got one more clip of it for you because I want to show you how biased the host was in the discussion afterwards. Before um, we do that, if you are enjoying tonight's show, please do subscribe because we don't do arbitrary hit jobs on trade unions with no evidence. And I think what's important here is it really shows you how much disdain Emma Barnett, who's hosting Newsnight in this instance, has for trade unionists and how much deference she has towards MPs. You completely see the different way she speaks to Howard Beckett, the different way she treats what Margaret Hodges said to what anyone at Unite has said, and then the different style of question she asked McDonough, who is on the panel with Howard Beckett. Let's take a look. You think Margaret Hodge is going to the police because she doesn't want you to be in charge of the union. You genuinely think that's why she's doing it? Of course she is. She's got no other reason to go to the police. There's nothing unlawful. Well, she's just listed all those reasons that she said in the film. Well, I'm not sure what she listed, Emma. You you must have heard something said (laughs) that I didn't hear say, because what I heard from Margaret Hodge was we should all have been working to defeat the Tories in 2017. Well, she called it appalling. She called it appalling. And and she's concerned about third party payments and potential criminal activity. Can can I just bring it on to, though, I suppose... If you're watching at home, Emma, and you're that's not... language. That, uh, Emma, just just as soon as I can just say, yes. because this is ridiculous language, and this is the BBC. There is no criminal activity in respect to this. If we wanted to engage someone to generate activism within the region, or if we wanted to ask a third party to sponsor someone to engage in political activity in a region, that is completely and utterly appropriate, and that is democracy in play. There's no criminal okay, activity. Me... Margaret Hodge is making a political stunt as here, you have said. And right, she, let and, me and, let me come and back to you. And just... and the hypocrisy, Emma sorry, to hypocrisy of her making a political stunt whenever she undermined the efforts to get a socialist government in 2017 is risable. Howard, I'll come back to you in just a moment. Siobhan, to bring you in at this point. Uh, what? There's no, nothing wrong with this, according to Howard Beckett. This is what unions do. All of those questions, whether or not they were put towards Howard Beckett or Siobhan McDonough, were hostile towards Howard Beckett. So first of all, she says, do you, do you really think, are you, are you really suggesting that Margaret Hodge could call the police because of political reasons? You know, what, you know, it almost implied in her voice that this is an outrageous thing to say. That she, he says, well, I don't know what her reasons were. She listed those reasons. She called it appalling. You know, she's, she's really challenging Howard Beckett. How could you possibly question the motives of Margaret. Then when she goes to Siobhan McDonough, her question is essentially, isn't what Howard Beckett's saying ridiculous? She says, they say it's completely normal for trade unions to do this. Do you think this? Now, that that's not a challenge to Siobhan McDonough. That's an invitation to trash trade unions. As I say, we haven't showed you the whole piece. You can go watch the whole thing yourself. This is definitely a fair reflection of the tone of the whole piece. But I, I just find that open disdain for trade unionists and especially left-wing trade unionists compared to the deference towards MPs, appalling. 